Let's look at one of these races. Uh, one of the other uh, openings for Democrats, if you will, is can they win or can they take away red states? Can they not only defend the blue states, but take away red states? One of the more key challenges there is the state of Georgia. The final debate just last night, uh, Republicans are mad at their candidate, David Perdue. They don't think he's run a very good race. Democrats think their candidate, Michelle Nunn, has run a pretty good race. The question is, can she get 50% plus one on Election Day? Uh, we'll see. But in the last debate to the very end of this campaign, you have two candidates and a president. If he'd wanted to run against the president, he should have run for president, but you are running against me. And I have made very clear that I have real differences with the president, and I will stand up for those differences. It just seems to me that this president has said that his policies are on the ballot. And in the state of Georgia, those failed policies go by the name of Michelle Nunn. To win this race, do we think Michelle Nunn has to win tomorrow? Can, 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 see, can she win a runoff election? It'll be tough for her to win a runoff election. But I think when you look at how Republicans saw this map at the start of the cycle, they wanted to nationalize the election, do the David Perdue strategy. Democrats wanted to make it about the candidates to localize the races as much as possible. And if you, th if you think about which Democrat has done the best job at fulfilling that Democratic strategy, I think it's Michelle Nunn. She's made the race about her. She's come across as a moderate Democrat. Uh, she's, she's really hit Perdue hard about his business career, his constant talk about outsourcing, painting him as a Mitt Romney-type figure. If anyone's going to win tomorrow and upset on the Democratic side, I think it's Michelle Nunn. Michelle Nunn, that would be a big one there. The other one we're watching, I think, for a wild card race, I think the top of the wild card list would have to be Kansas, where you don't have a Democrat on the ballot. You have Republican Pat Roberts, independent Greg Orman. The question, Greg Orman has said, if I win, I'm going to wait and see how this all plays out. I'm not going to tell you if I'll side with the Democrats in organizing. I'm not going to tell you if I'll side with the Republicans in organizing. Is it conceivable we wake up Wednesday morning with Greg Orman in a position of huge power, waiting for runoffs potentially in two states, Georgia and Louisiana? Absolutely. I think that I think that's com completely plausible. And the other thing Orman said that I think is interesting, he's like, well, maybe I'll caucus with, you know, one and then the other. I don't see that flying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any um, uh, leader really letting that happen. So you imagine he's going to be getting lots of phone calls.